All right, what's going on? It's Friday, end the week off with a nice little line pump gig. We got about, uh, I think it's about almost 200 feet of hose off here. Running up around the back of the house, up and over the wall and around the back of the house. Just some retaining walls here, footing and retaining walls. You'll see what I'm after here in a second. The Holy Grail. Oh, there it is. Topsoil. For the hopper. Beautiful preventative hopper maintenance. I might even scoop another bucket before I leave here. Store it on the truck for the next one. For an easy washout. And today I'm not going to use the secondary screen because Robbie's drum is always exceptionally clean and we need to keep this stuff a little bit drier for the footing portion at least. When we wet it up and we're topping up the walls I might toss the screen on then but to get going here we're going to uh, go au natural. And always remember to love your ready mix drivers. Pin, 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 chains and most importantly Safety mat. What color will it be? Don't tell me. I like surprises. <laughs> I bet it's like a brown. We've been doing a lot of brown lately. Want me to tell you? Nope. Okay. <laughs> you tell me if I'm right or wrong. Right or right, you're wrong. Oh, charcoal. Really? Oh, nice round rock too. We got the round rock today. This will pump, right? Okay. A couple strokes here. Once the primer makes it up and over the hump, I'll drop this down. such that it's not at face level with the drivers or any passers-by. So yeah, this stuff having color in it, that's going to set it up quicker as well. So I think these, uh, this footings, the footing, the mix going into the footings will kick off real quick. So I'll just get up over the hump here. There we go. I threw one full bucket of bentonite in the back elbow was arguably a little bit too wet but we'll make it work you know what to sure we don't plug there's my glove i was looking for yeah to ensure we don't plug bring the hammer if you bring the hammer it won't plug if you don't it will if you don't put your rain gear on it will rain if you do put it on it won't you know it goes right, let's see what we got here Let's leave this right here. Sounds good. Nice and slow on an uphill prime is what I usually did. You ready? Are you ready? Coming around the corner. Oh, it sounds gritty. Not like that. Here it comes. 
Bing, 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 bang. <laughs> you just lay that down, Chris, or it's gonna plug right where you're holding it up. Yeah. Just till the first bit of slop comes through. I'll pull it out for away from the pudding. There you go. Look at that. Not too shabby. Yeah. For once ever, oh, first oh, ever YouTube rock. full full fun. Just all around the rock. Really good rock. Yeah, nice round stuff makes a big difference. Yeah, I put a big bucket in there, so I'll take it for a bit of it. That's gonna be pretty good. Okay. Oh yeah, now it's nice and dry. Woohoo! That's charcoal, Roger. Charcoal? That's not, that's not your yellow sunglasses. Yeah, I was looking at the slate. Slate, sorry, slate. Slate color. No. Can I read? Can I tell just by looking at it? That's gonna go. Yeah. It's gonna go. It's pretty stiff. It is. It is stiff. Get these two footings in and maybe give it a little drink. Don't what do you need think? To do a slump test on that. Well, just plug, I think. So, <laughs> or my remote cut out, one of the two. No, that was a plug. Lovely. Whoa. I think that was a plug. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little, a little dry. A couple strokes back. Go back and forward here. What do we got? Who oh, no. no, it's moving. It's moving, it's just working hard. It's pretty dry. Yeah, as soon as those two footings are in, we're gonna juice this up. It doesn't like being quite this dry. a little hose check here okay wet it up starting them all over there okay okay so as soon as the footings a couple barrels from done we'll juice it okay that wall there is all all scribed to rock nature's footing man this stuff is sticky hey eh? <laughs> All right, we'll just roll back, do a little line check here. Make sure we're not damaging hose or property. Pumper Caddy is doing its job. Good. I'm somewhat regretting my decision to not face the opposite direction and just run the hose right up the driveway here rather than coming over the rock wall like that, or the cinder block wall. Uh, and as far as pulling the pump in the driveway, it's just too steep, I don't like doing that. The hopper doesn't feed very well. All the mud stays at the back of the hopper, cakes the crap out of it by day's end, so I'm not a fan of, uh, of setting up facing uphill unless I absolutely have to, so. This is working, but yeah, I do kind of wish I'd come, I'd come around this way now. Good old hindsight. Yeah, I think as soon as we get like another meter off and it's sealed around the wall, then maybe I'll get him to juice it and we can, can wind it up a bit for the, the outer portion of the footing. Get it in there a little bit quicker so it's not so not so sticky. It seems like it's drying really quick. It is, yeah, that color just soaks it up, soaks up the moisture. Check in on our pressures here. This old girl starts to get cranky around 3,500 to 4,000. We're sitting 2,200-ish, so she's definitely pushing. She is working.
Okay, Chrissy is empty. I'm gonna go back there and give you seven or eight strokes just to pump my hopper down and clean it out, purge it. Okay, so be ready for it. Seven or eight strokes. That's what I always do between loads. I'll pump the hopper right down low so I don't have all the stuff caked at the back. All right, so now I'll pump this right down. Take this down nice and low. Seven or eight strokes. Just till it's about to suck air. Some guys will spray the sides down too. I don't because I soak everything in oil. I don't want to rinse my oil away. If I had any buildup clinging to the sides here, I just poke it down with a stick. But I do this, and when I get the fresh load in here, I'm nice and clean. Otherwise, if I kept this full and you put the fresh load in, quite often the old stuff will stay caked against the hopper. It never actually purges itself out. And come time to wash out, you've got your first load of concrete hardened against the hopper rather than your second, third, fourth, or fifth. So, so I always do this between loads whenever possible. It's one of my little habits. Because we're not pouring dry anymore, I'm gonna throw the screen on the hopper here. Let's make this thing plug proof, or darn close to it. Still soft? Oh yeah. Oh, it is. Too soft to get into. Really? Oh, yeah. Still poke your finger through, huh? Okay. Or do that exactly. Yes. Or just voice over it. Check on our line here. These hoses now are like 800 bucks, almost Canadian, uh, for a 25 foot length of two inch hose. It's crazy. How are we doing here? Man, these uh, pumper caddies are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, she's jumping around a bit, but that's the name of the two-inch hose game, so. We just use it on all our jobs because we're usually only doing like a load to a load and a half. And uh, way quicker to set up, way quicker to take down. Uh, easier to blow out, less volume of air, less stored energy in the hose when you do blow out. So most all of our work we use, uh, or residential work, I should say, we use the two-inch line, so. Steel pipes only come out to play when it's commercial pours, which is not very often with our line pumps. Surprised that footing is really not setting up. Um, we've seen that before with the charcoal and black colors in the concrete. Um, anybody else have the same experience? For whatever reason, just, just the, the dark colors, black, charcoal, any of the reds, the browns, they take off like crazy, but the, the, the black stuff, blacks and charcoals, and the, the more, the higher the percentage of color in it, the uh, the slower setting it is. It's really, uh, it's an anomaly. See how they brace the crap out of this corner here of the house. Very nicely done. 
Very, very nicely done indeed. Challenges of building on stone. It has dried out a fair bit, which is probably good for the other wall where the footing's still soft ish. Is it? Think about the only job I wouldn't trade for concrete when it's hot is that roofing in this seat. Oh man, they always have like sweaters on it. I know, You're packing bundles up the ladder, it, it's crazy, it's different breed. Roofers and rebar guys. Yeah, toughest breeds in construction. The plywood, it was a short piece of ply, the only thing holding it was a two by four. Just stand like that for two hours and let it set, it'll be good. <laughs> what do you do then, Rick? Do we just vibe it, right, vibe it, uh, vibe it empty and try and push it back? Well, we're gonna have or is that buried anyhow? How full is it? Like, how much would you have to vibe out? It was full. Oh, yeah, there's still a lot. Bugger. No, 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 no. Let it, let it drain. Otherwise, you never going to get that wall back. Okay. Too much pressure? No. I knew we should have uh, nailed that seam. Is it exposed at that height? Or does that get covered? No, it's totally covered. Oh, it is covered. Oh, okay. So as long as it holds concrete, we're good. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, how low are we now? Yeah, there was no buckle tie in there. Just the, the tie through the wall, but there's no... Oh, there's no buckle on the other no side? buckle on this side. Oh, uh, we didn't notice. Nobody noticed. Yeah, it's right, it's right in the bottom corner, so nobody... Oh, you can't see it. You can't see it. Oh, right? bugger. Yeah, it's right here. Oh yeah, yeah. So pulled right through. Yeah, because I looked here, looking here on the ground. Yeah. So it was a. Ah, uh, just an oversight. Yeah, because it didn't, it didn't pop or anything. You didn't hear pop. I just bugger. Yeah, there's probably two barrels there. But I think uh, it's a tight measure, so it's all got to go back in. <laughs> Buckets and shovel. Yeah. You want me to grab my buckets, Rick, or do we got lots already? Do you want me to grab my buckets? Uh, I guess we got to put it back in. Yeah, we got to try and put it back bucket in. Bucket brigade. Bucket brigade. Okay. Well, as much as that sucks, we call that real world. A real world. Beautiful forms. And uh, yeah, we just missed the tie. It happens. That's the real world, friends. It happens. Somebody order buckets and a shovel. Yep. That's not too bad. It's a couple of barrels. This will be the stuff that instantly dries. Yeah. Is this going to segue into some story about how you used to pour foundations like this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Back before we had pumps, before we had wheelbarrows and ramps. Well, this would segue into your dad's era. <laughs> it would, dad's yeah. Era, Any 19, 1930s house, and you look at the foundation, and it's just cold joint after cold joint every six to 18 inches. You guys actually got it all the way back. Pretty much, pretty damn close. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. Wow. First floor, Good job. 
Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Won't be the last. Yeah, exactly. Definitely not. It's okay. It gives the footing more time to set on the other side. We would have been waiting for it anyhow. So. I think we're gonna need it all. The measurement was. Uh, Oh yeah. yeah. Bucket now or bucket later. She's good. Nice. It's fixed. Bucket the hopper. Yeah. I honestly think we might be that close. So. Okay. So the electronic meter says there's 2.4 cubic meters left, which would give us lots to finish. Tapping the drum tells us usually this mark here is about three meters. This would be about two. This is about one. So we got one and a half to one and a quarter, according to what the drum says. But the computer says otherwise. I guess we'll find out, because if it is only one and a half, we're 100% gonna be short of concrete here. The computer's right, and it's 2.4. We're good. Stay tuned. Da, da, da. Okay. Good news, bad news. The, the good news is the little meter on the drum, the computer says 2.4. The bad news is old school tapping the drum says about a meter and a quarter. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna run them out though? Run it out, let's see where we get to. Yep. All right, so I don't think there's a chance we have enough concrete here. So I'm gonna get the driver to wet up this last bit. We'll pump right out. I will use the Milwaukee air compressor to blow back into the lines into the pump and then I will recirculate the lines or just recirculate through one line while we wait for the balance load. Well, just like that, we have indeed run short. So I'm going to uh, pump this hopper down a little bit more and then we'll push all the lines back into the hopper and I'll recirculate through just one hose until the balance gets here because we might be waiting an hour, hour and a half. So it is what it is. All right, here we go. Sponge in. Gasket on. Blow cap in place. In place. <laughs> Plastic wrap for a little bit of extra seal. So it doesn't leak air. Nice and tight. Clean-ish clamp. Find the sweet spot. Like so. Perfect, clamp's nice and tight. And because the safety pin is right here, why the heck not? Okay. Yes, I'm gonna, because uh, the pump doesn't have enough vacuum through the two inch hose to suck it all the way back to the hopper. So use the air to assist it. Take it back to the hopper. Then I'll break it off at just the first hose, pump it forward and we'll just recirculate while we wait. Then we're not sitting with the lines full of concrete. Yeah, it's all rock hard. And I don't want to blow it out that way because it's uphill okay. and it's so close to the house. So, <clears throat> so put the old, the old muddy feet tub in place. Flip me down. Lid down. We'll go back, we'll fire up the air. And we'll suck the pump back in reverse at a moderate pace until that sponge is all the way back. Or at least back into that first hose. Fire up little Milwaukee. Close 
close that up. Let her build up some pressure. Very little reserve capacity on this, so you want it fully charged up, especially at the start, just to get that, that initial uh, movement of the sponge ball there. All right, compressor is charged. Air is on. Go back to where I can hear the pump here. Pump is in reverse. Here we go. And we got movement, we're coming back. Perfect. And you don't wanna to go too fast or you just vacuum lock it. Cause that compressor can only put out such a small volume of air. So you wanna go nice and slow. If you vacuum lock it and you end up sucking one of the hoses in right off the hopper, uh, then you got to kind of push ahead again and sort of restart almost from the beginning. So just go nice and slow. But she's moving. It's a slower process, but uh, effective we got all the time in the world right now because we're gonna be about an hour and a half before balance gets here maybe two hours even i like just to hold the hose up with my foot like this and as soon as it's empty i'll uh, i can feel it so i can track where the sponge is at track my progress empty and yeah, if you got a, uh, a little quicker compressor on site, like a plug-in compressor or something, obviously this is a, a much faster process. But I like this little Milwaukee. It's, uh, it's good enough for the two inch line, even two and a half, it's decent. You get into like a three inch line and it's just not an ideal volume of air, but. Almost there. Once this sponge makes its way into that first hose, I'm gonna stop the pump, go back, bleed off the air. Then I'll crack that clamp, take it around to the hopper, and we'll just recirculate while we wait. And yeah, we'll have to reprime the lines, but it is what it is. And I think that sponge is just about there. Just about there. All right, we're good. Turn the pump off. Bleed the air off, and we will recirculate. This battery here, this 6.0, it'll run that compressor for about 20 minutes. Luckily, we got a charger on site here, so I'll charge it back up before we gotta use the compressor again when we clean up. So what I've found, if I pump the hopper right down low before sucking back, I can fit 200 feet or two inch line into the hopper of this pump. So we just pulled back 150, so let's see where we're at. Not too shabby. By the time I take a few strokes forward and start working this stuff around, it'll be a little bit higher than ideal, but uh, it'll work. You can tell the sponge made it through here because of the uh, little, little streaks, little trails. Now when I put this back and forward and go to recirculate, there is a sponge in the hose, so I gotta be careful, nice and slow. It might bind up a little bit, so be aware of that.
kind of like that. Retrieve my little friend here. They're only about three bucks, but it really wrecks my day, week, month when I lose one of these. Yeah, so I'm just gonna cycle this stuff around while we wait here every few minutes. As we're sitting here waiting on the next load of concrete, did a little trickle of water in the wall. And we're gonna consolidate that with a vibrator just to freshen up that cold joint. Reduce any chances of getting a visible seam in the wall. Like I said, I do like to have my hopper lower when I'm recirculating just to avoid the buildup and whatnot, but uh, in this situation, my options aren't. Uh, aren't quite what I would like them to be, so just working with what we got here. Look what just rolled up about an hour and a half later. Oh, hey, it was our same driver that we had on the last load. Ha! Amazing, I thought he was joking. But yeah, he went back, got our balance, and here he is, right back. All right, let's see how caked up we are. What do we got? You know what? It's actually not, it's not really that terrible. Still gonna knock it in and mix it around and minimize the uh, the crappiness of my washout. Yeah, that's actually not bad. I'm not worried about this stuff causing plugs. It's not that hard. Just a little, a little sticky more than anything, and I won't disturb my my dirt too much. Leave our dirt intact. All right, let's bring our truck back. Good. All right. Yeah, I can work with that. That's not horrible at all. I thought you were joking about being our uh, our balance load. Oh, oh did ya? <laughs> you weren't joking. Oh, that's what she was saying. She goes, yeah. uh, you're, you're going to be returning. That was a nice little 90 minute break. I don't mind. <laughs> that was actually pretty quick considering. Because I heard there was an accident at the bottom of the cut too. Yeah, there was. There was. All right. Uh, we'll, probably use, we'll probably use a meter and a half or two. Yeah, so. Let's see what we, oh yeah, you nailed it. Good slump. It's cause you got the, the sticker on the hard hat. That's why you got the slump so right. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you slumping superpowers. Right? <laughs> Sweet. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll come back and check in periodically and yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. Yeah, let me know if you want to keep it low up. Huh? Yeah, I'll give you a couple honks when we're close. Okay. Okay, we got enough mud. I guess let's just get rid of the junk on the ground and then. I did, yeah. I emptied it out. Like <laughs> Imagine if I didn't and forgot. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll spread it. It sounds like there's still stuff in there. No, no, no. How I. I uh, just go until the concrete looks decent, I think. Because that stuff in the hopper is just trash. Was it pretty full or your hopper? It was, but a lot of it's caked up and whatnot. You probably, yeah, you'll you'll know when you're out of the junk. Do we want do we want to put that hose on, spread some over here too, maybe? Is that an idea? This is a good deep hole though, right? Is it? Okay. Okay, yeah, let's throw that last hose on now and then probably spread a little bit here too and and fill the columns and then go back to the wall, I think. Oh god, that's hard, dude. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's fill the columns for sure. 
<laughs> we'll throw that hose. Well, I, just want, I, don't, I want to. I'd like to blend this stuff now, though, Scott. Yeah, it w do it, do it with the new stuff. Don't Roger doesn't want to put the old stuff in the wall and have a load line just because of the discoloration. And he he's right. Yeah, no, the columns doesn't matter so much. So, like, okay. This stuff's so wet, you could probably just tap it with a hammer. <laughs> Mind you, the footing is also rock hard, so take a couple strokes and consolidate it. Okay, drop her in, give her a little buzz, and we'll finish it off. Every foot just just really beat it in there. Do a little uh, eight-inch lift on that joint. Come along with a vibrator and try and consolidate it. To minimize any sort of a visible seam here. Just a quick little pass. Work it with the vibrator, then we'll come back and top it up. I shut it off. Sure, professional vibrator guy. <laughs> This wall is now your responsibility, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you get behind him and then we'll start filling. Yeah, I would touch it up with that, go yeah, behind him just to be sure, and then, and then we'll fill it. I see, I just started there. Doing everything we can here to try and blend this cold joint. Or what will hopefully not be a cold joint. Big vibe, you think, Yeah, big vibe for sure, yeah. Because once it's got the full weight in there, we should go down all the way to the joint again. Yeah. And now it's got some weight on it to blend in. Top of pass. All right, so we've pumped out here, pumped the wall out, I should say. So before I uh, break down and suck the lines back in and grab some sugar, because I'm going to the ready mix plant to wash out, I do not have another job. So I'm going to sprinkle in a couple measuring cups full of this stuff. Sprinkle it across the back, a little bit in the front. And that should be lots to kill this stuff. A little bit goes a long way. I like to do this before I completely pump out, then I get the benefit of it mixing in with the agitation of the, the S-tube and the auger and whatnot. Um, and then I'll suck back the lines and it's blended in there real good and this hopper is going nowhere. Mix up a little sugar water here. I'll throw this in front of my sponge. Just so when I take it back, I get that sugar water into the S-tube. Much easier than draining hoses by hand on a hot day. The other benefit is it is super safe because you don't have air discharging out the end of the hose. This is pretty pretty foolproof. All right, just like that. Hoses are empty, sucked back into the hopper. Oh, you can almost hear the ocean. Something like that. I'll give this one a roll just to be sure. Just to be sure. Something like that. Lift this up. Yeah. Something like that. Safety pin out, clamp, undone. Producer up. 
hose clean hopper hopper is doped up sugared up going nowhere when I add the sugar I don't put a bunch of water in there as well see how wet that is already I wouldn't want to travel with it any wetter than that with the hopper this full so perfection I'm happy yeah silly man thanks so we'll load everything back on the pump we'll head to the washout area the ready mix plant call it a day man that should have been such a quick easy little pour ran short of concrete had a little bloat on the wall lots of real world adversity anyhow so it was a good day like share subscribe times three over and out so important to put sugar in the hopper to dope it up before you go to wash out welcome to Vancouver traffic every day of the week and this is the freeway here too so I'll be there in another half hour so. look at this this wall here turned out great this is the one uh, we had to wait about two hours for a balanced load we ran short of concrete I think we ran short from what I recall. It's about two, three feet down. I can't really even definitively see where the joint was. Maybe it was here. Yeah, all in all, it looks pretty darn good. things considered that turned out uh, quite nice beautiful over here that's where they had the little blowout but this is uh, this is all buried That looks good. Like I said, I think. Couldn't even say for sure where the joint is, honestly. Maybe on this wall. Maybe it's right around there, but I mean, the, you can't really tell any difference from, from the rest of the wall. Pretty good.